What led to the genocide in the galaxy 11 billion years ago? Our current understanding of the galaxies and our universe reveals that they contain a diverse range of stars. Similar to our Milky Way, the majority of known galaxies have a mixture of young, middle-aged, and ancient stars. These stars come in a wide variety of hues, ranging from blue to red and everything in between. Nevertheless, an odd event that occurred 11 billion years ago altered the basic makeup of these galaxies. A massive extinction. What was that? Why did that take place? Join us as we continue our discussion of it in this video. The majority of the galaxies we are familiar with are still star-forming and star-rich, just like our Milky Way. The neutral hot gas in these galaxies contracts to produce new episodes of star formation at a gradual but steady rate. Sometimes, a galaxy will experience a starburst in which a large number of new stars are created all at once. Nonetheless, there are several galaxies, particularly around the centers of huge galaxy clusters that are almost entirely composed of old stars. The majority of its stars are yellow, orange, or red, very few are white or blue. In extreme circumstances, some of them have not produced a new star in more than 12 billion years. It appears as though some of the young universe's most massive and star-rich galaxies abruptly switch off their star formation processes, never to do so again. A shocking new study claims that some of these galaxies were observed turned off for the last time 11 billion years or more ago. Astronomers are still perplexed as to how a vast cosmic murder could have taken place only 3 billion years after the Big Bang. In the earliest moments of the explosive Big Bang, there were no stars. It takes a long time for matter to gravitationally clump, cluster, and collect enough mass to form stars. A few hundred million years after the Big Bang, the first galaxies are observed. As more matter falls onto the over-dense regions, star clusters and then proto-galaxies merge to form larger mass accumulations, and the earliest generations of stars introduce heavy elements into the mixture, allowing for faster cooling and faster star formation. The rate of star formation increases. The universe continues to create stars at an increasing rate over the next two billion years or so, reaches a peak, and then begins to decline. By the time we reach the present, we can observe that many of our galaxies are red and dead, which denotes that no significant new star-forming events have occurred in many billions of years. The hot, young, blue stars will all have burnt through their fuel after that period of time, putting an end to their existence and leaving only the cooler, redder, lower-mass stars behind. About half of the most massive galaxies that existed 11 billion years ago have already permanently stopped producing stars, according to measurements of ultra-distant galaxies from the early universe and stellar populations that still persist in closer galaxies. This in and of itself is a conundrum. There are three key reasons, at least in terms of what we would naively think, why star formation would not just abruptly end inside of these gigantic galaxies, never to start again. 1. We fully anticipate that the dark matter halos around these galaxies will keep the neutral matter gravitationally bound, where it will eventually fall back onto the galaxy and form new stars. Despite the fact that massive star formation can energies, ionize, and expel neutral matter from these galaxies. 2. Even in an expanding universe, these galaxies will gradually develop as material from the intergalactic medium falls onto them, causing star formation to resume once a critical density is reached. 3. These galaxies are not isolated, rather, they are contiguous. For instance, minor and significant mergers ought to cause successive spurts of star formation throughout their histories, giving rise to new populations of stars. From what we have seen, it is evident that a significant number of these early, massive, star-rich galaxies do not experience this. Of course, astronomers' most pressing inquiry is, why? It would be ideal if we could look back at these very young galaxies with our most potent observatories at the precise moment that star creation peaks and subsequently declines. 
We would be able to observe the stellar populations growing, the winds emanating from these hot, young stars and the galaxy's black hole, as well as the velocity, ionization, and density of the surrounding matter. By making the earliest and most detailed direct observations of these galaxies, we could now understand how and why they turn red and dead. Sadly, the current generation of observatories is not up to the challenge since they are incapable of gathering enough light or having the necessary resolution to understand what is happening inside those far-off galaxies. Nevertheless, for a portion of these galaxies, the amplification effects of extreme gravitational lensing suddenly make these observations conceivable. The light can be stretched out into several images, distorted, and most importantly, magnified if there is enough mass between our line of sight and the background galaxy we are trying to investigate. These background objects can be tens or hundreds of times brighter in a perfect alignment than they would be without the intervening mass acting as a gravitational lens. One of the most exciting breakthroughs in observational cosmology has been the imaging investigations that try to measure the regions of space that should be gravitationally lensed by massive foreground clusters. One of the first and most successful examples was Hubble's Frontier Fields program, however it has lately been outdone in many ways by a more recent effort, Requiem. We can first locate massive, star-forming galaxies at these early epochs, then characterize them and their gas populations using the resolution quiescent magnified Requiem Galaxy Survey, which combines views from Hubble in the optical and near-infrared and ALMA in the radio. Carbon monoxide tracing was the only method available to determine the presence of gas in galaxies this far away, but it was a very unreliable proxy that frequently required stacking data from many sites to infer any kind of average abundance. Thus, for a population of six galaxies in the Requiem Galaxy Survey, individual measurements of the presence, or lack, of dust in each individual galaxy at these great cosmic distances could be made. Gravitational lenses are primarily gravitational effects, therefore they magnify all light wavelengths equally, unlike dust, which emits light differently depending on its temperature. We were able to gather data on dust emission from these far-off, lensed galaxies due to gravitational lensing processes, and researchers used a tried and true method to translate the results into abundances of cold molecular gas, the substance that creates new stars. The researchers were then able to compute the amount of gas, specifically neutral molecular hydrogen gas, which is needed for the creation of new stars, present in the region of these six galaxies, and they made an amazing discovery. At that distance, one of these galaxies has roughly 4.6%, another 0.6%, and the remaining four undetectably minuscule amounts of gas. These galaxies and the area around them are almost completely free of gas and dust. Moreover, all six of these galaxies are now producing relatively few new stars, each at a rate lower than that of the present-day Milky Way, which produces fewer stars each year than are equivalent to one solar mass. This discovery is noteworthy for two reasons. First, the amazing technical achievement that made it possible, and second, the fact that the absence of cold interstellar gas has never been observed so early in the history of the universe. These galaxies are not oddities, but rather almost half of the most massive galaxies from when the universe was just approximately 3 billion years old. Five of these six galaxies have star formation rates and total gas contents that are less than 1% of what is typical. The majority of the massive galaxies had already stopped producing stars by the time the universe was 3 billion years old, or roughly 11 billion years ago, according to our study's extrapolation of its findings to the whole population of those galaxies. The consequences are astounding. Traditionally, it was thought that the host galaxy would gradually absorb the gas over time, but this is not the case. These massive galaxies not only lose their gas reservoir, which is needed to create upcoming generations of stars, but it appears that they will never recoup it. Nothing in the way of gas falling back upon them, future mergers, infall, or other occurrences will likely help. 
As the evidence mounts, it does not seem to support the anticipated scenario in which star formation occurs in periodic bursts and eventually resumes for almost all of these galaxies. In contrast, it appears that galaxies burn up all of their potentially star-forming material in massive amounts, becoming gas poor very early on and staying that way, as far as we can tell, for the whole of cosmic history. What then is the mechanism behind the star production halt in these young galaxies? It is as a result of their low and unrefilled petrol supplies. Traditionally, it was thought that star formation would simply come to an end after extended periods of inefficiency due to a feedback effect or other type of back reaction. These hypotheses might be relevant to some galaxies, but they are unable to explain what we observe. Star formation in these galaxies is undoubtedly driven by the gas reservoirs, and it stops when the reservoirs become dry and do not renew themselves. The next logical question is, why does this happen? Is it because this neutral matter is blasted away by powerful, scorching, blue star stellar winds? Might the problem be due to feedback from active supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies? Might there even be impacts taking place in the halos of these galaxies, or may mergers, which would need to resolve rather quickly, be the cause of this gas ejection and the permanent cessation of star formation? These are all open questions that will be resolved with additional research and more accurate measurements. We can now precisely explain the origin and characteristics of red and dead galaxies. The next step is to determine how they came to be this way and how they remain that way. We will surely be able to explore these early galaxies and their surroundings more in the future thanks to observatories, and we will also be able to test our theories about the relationship between the presence or absence of gas and dust. Currently, gravitational lensing and multi-wavelength deep observations have just revealed that a great galactic genocide took place very early in the history of the universe. This discovery puts us one step closer to understanding how the universe not only grows up, but also how some of its properties stop growing entirely and simply die away. What do you think of this incredible phenomenon then? Comment below with your thoughts and let us know what you think. Also don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel because doing so motivates us to continue producing excellent material for you.